And the first piece on the program is a piece that I like a lot. I'm happy that they're playing it. It's Mendelssohn's first string quartet. He wrote it when he was all of 18 years old in 1827. And it's, I think, a very self-revealing quartet. It's a quartet that he wrote at a time of his life when he was expanding his incredibly capacious mind. And I think that it really reflects that. Um, it was a year when he decided that he would enroll in the University of Berlin so that he could study philosophy with Hegel. Also, it was a year of some sadness. He had a very close boyhood friend who died that year. And also, it was the year that his greatest living musical idol, Beethoven, also died. He died that March. And it was a year that he expressed his deep, passionate love for a young soprano whose name was Betty Pistor. And he did this in musical terms. He, he wrote a song, a short song called Frage, Question. And the question that he asks in this song is, is it true, ist es wahr, that Betty will love me forever? And this entire 30-minute quartet, in one way or another, is either overtly or subliminally related to that question, so I thought you should know what it sounds like. That's kind of the motto of this quartet. And the first time you'll, you'll hear it verbatim is at the end of this rather um, hymn-like introduction. So just stay with that, because you'll hear it also in subliminal ways and reflected in the themes and the various movements. And also, you know, when he wrote the song, he sent it along with his first edition of the uh, quartet to a friend of his who was a composer. And he said, this piece is really, the key to it is the second verse of the song. And so again, I think it might be helpful or interesting if I read you the second verse of the song. It's short. What I feel can only be understood by she who feels as I do and is true to me forever, eternally true. And here is the music to the poem. And again, this music comes back in the course of this piece, subliminally, sometimes overtly. I'll, I'll just show you a couple of examples, but I also wanted to say, along with his love for Betty Pistor, this piece was inspired by his love for Beethoven, since Beethoven had just died. And particularly for Beethoven's late string quartets, which at that time in 1827 were pretty universally regarded as the incomprehensible ravings of a man who was deaf and had gone off the musical deep end. But he was, again, precocious, and he was very intrigued by these late quartets. And so this piece, this 30-minute quartet, it imitates or it emulates the late string quartets of Beethoven in microcosmic and in macrocosmic ways. And to give you a quick microcosmic example, I'll play you again the motto of this piece, these three notes that ask, is it true? And here is the three-note motto of the last movement of the last quartet of Beethoven, which was published just about a month before Felix started to write this piece. The question is, must it be? But I think you can hear the reference. And then to give you a more macrocosmic sort of a relationship, I think 
the hallmark of late Beethoven is the way that he interrelates the themes of all of his pieces so that you get this sense of unified coherence. And if we jump ahead to the third movement of this piece, it begins with a lovely melody. It sounds like an old folk tune. And then it launches suddenly in the trio into this, it's a very Mendelssohnian scherzo. It's, it's gossamer and it's fairyland and it's Midsummer Night's dreamish. But if you slow it down from that frenetic 78 RPM pace to 33 and a third, you can hear that in fact those notes are essentially the same notes as in the second verse of the song that I played for you. And at the end of the quartet, he, after this turbulent 30-minute piece, he comes back to contemplating that exact melody. He's asking in musical terms, is it true that Betty Pistor will love me forever? And if you're curious about the answer to that question, it's no. <laughs> she didn't love him forever. As a matter of fact, she married another guy a couple of years later, much to his disappointment. Which I think only goes to show that in this life, we can't have everything we want, even if we happen to be Felix Mendelssohn. So enjoy this, this wonderful quartet at the hands and the bows of the Schumann String Quartet, and have a great afternoon.